Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. Uh, in this video, we're gonna be going into routing with F-sharp and the Giraffe web framework. So by the end of the video, uh, hopefully you'll have a better understanding of F-sharp uh, and especially how to use it with Giraffe um, and should be able to understand how to make your own routing configurations for about 95% of use cases. Um, the last 5% can kind of get a little complicated, weird, um, but for most cases, this should be enough. So first we're gonna start with some uh, context and some prerequisites you're gonna need if you're gonna follow along uh, successfully. Then we're gonna give an overview of how Giraffe does its routing. Um, go into some basic routes, which will probably make up most of what you do in your web APIs. Uh, and then we'll finish off with some parameterized routes, which just gives you a little bit more power. Okay, so first let's start off with the technologies. Um, F-sharp and Giraffe are great choices for simple scalable web APIs. Uh, F-sharp runs on .NET runtime, which is shared by C-sharp. Uh, it's very productive, functional first language, um, static typing, all sorts of good stuff. Uh, and then Giraffe is one of the most popular web frameworks available for F-sharp. Uh, it's very simple, uh, very performant, um, and it allows you to write web servers and services functionally, which is great. If you want to know more about why I like F# -sharp and Giraffe um, for my web APIs and use it for most of my new projects, uh, you can check out this video. Uh, but it's out of scope for uh, this one. Okay, so some things that you're going to need if you want to follow along. Um, if you want to check out the code and actually run it yourself, then you will need uh, the .NET SDK and the command line client. You can go get that from Microsoft. And I'm kind of assuming that you have a basic understanding of HTTP requests. Um, if not, just know that this is how most services, you know, communicate on the web. Okay, and I will be talking a little bit about how, how F-sharp and Giraffe work together and how you can build your APIs with them, um, but we're really focused on routing, so if you want more of an explanation of that, I do have this video here that you can go check out. All right, uh, with all of that out of the way, we can finally get to a Giraffe routing. So throughout the rest of this video, I'm gonna be showing you some examples of um, routing configurations and kind of how they end up affecting the behavior of our web server. Um, they're all gonna basically follow this same format because this is the format that uh, Giraffe does its routing configurations in. So here we basically have a big list of endpoints that we will construct and then we'll configure it into our web server, which is how the web server knows what routes should go call uh, what functions. And the big things we'll be configuring within this list um, are things like the HTTP verb. So if we want to handle a git or a post or any of your other favorite verbs, um, we can configure that here. Uh, we also will have a route function, um, which our giraffe built in to kind of tell the framework how we want it to be identifying these routes, how we want it to actually process this stuff. Um, and we'll be talking about that later. The route, which is the actual string path that we are trying to match against. So slash, slash API, slash post, slash comments, things like that. And then finally we have the handler, which is the actual function that leads into our business logic that we wanted to call. Uh, when this route is hit. It's a list, um, so you know, have a lot, a lot of these all together, but this is the basic uh, format of those. So to just give you uh, probably the most basic example I can think of um, to show you how this works, uh, here's the HTTP verb, it's just a git. Uh, we are saying we just have a basic route here, which we'll again talk about later. Uh, we're saying that the route that we want to match against is just a slash, and then we're gonna return text of hello world. Um, so. Theoretically, if we were to run our web server here, if you hit slash, you would return hello world. Uh, text is just a built-in um, for dealing with payloads. Um, that's out of the scope of this video, uh, but you can check out that other video on building APIs with F Sharp and Giraffe, uh, which we'll go over that. Okay, so for the rest of this video, we are only gonna be focused on this you know, endpoint list variable, but I did wanna show you kind of how this connects to our web server, so you kind of understand why this variable does anything. And I'll be demoing this throughout, um, and the, the full source code will also be available on my website, uh, as well as a link to the full GitHub repo that you can run yourself. Um, but let me go show you that code real fast. So here I am in my original blog post, which again is gonna be linked below. And we scroll down, we have this code block, uh, which is basically just the main entry point of what a web server will look like. And this is where our endpoints list is. Um, so everything I'm showing you, this is basically where it goes. Um, and everything down here is basically boilerplate to configure this. Uh, everything is basically how you set up any ASP.NET Core app. Um, the only difference is we're saying, hey, we want giraffe here. Uh, and then we are configuring the endpoints list um, variable that we created in our configure app for iApplication Builder. Going into the details of this, again, outside the scope of this video, um, but please check out my other video if you wanna learn more about that and 
for now you can just focus on the endpoints list which we'll be going over. Okay, uh, final thing to get out of the way is that we are gonna be going over the routing using giraffe.endpoint routing. Um, this has been the recommended version since uh, giraffe 5.x, which came out in 2021. Um, but most tutorials um, and most examples of giraffe that uh, exist online seem to use the legacy routing. Um, so just wanted to let you know that this is probably why uh, the routing that you see here uh, might look a, a, a lot different than other examples you might see online. They all basically do the same thing, um, but the big difference is uh, with the newer recommended version of routing um, is that one, it just has a subset of routing functions, um, but it's a critical mass subset, so you can still do basically everything you'd want to do with an HTTP server. Um, it has more direct access to ASP.NET Core routing, which is .NET's like official version of this, so you get a lot of power there um, if you need it, and it also gets all updates uh, directly from there, just kind of flowing into um, Giraffe. It is case insensitive by default, which some people might not like, but I think if your uh, URLs are case sensitive, you are probably doing something wrong. Um, so it shouldn't be a problem. And then the last thing we get is that it is um, a good bit faster, about 8% based on uh, some, some benchmarks we've been running uh, than the legacy draft router. So just wanna let, let you know, uh, this is a good thing, um, but it might be look a little bit different than uh, other giraffe uh, examples that you might see. Uh, for more on this, it it is detailed in the official draft documentation, uh, which I'll have linked um, in, my, in my blog post that's linked below. Okay, uh, so with that understanding of giraffe and kind of how we're doing routing, um, we can get into the route configurations themselves. Uh, let's start with the basic routes. So um, first thing to know is that all your favorite HTTP verbs are uh, available here. So uh, throughout, I'm gonna be using um, git just because it's way easier for me to show you that um, just via my browser, um, but you can basically replace it with any of these if you wanted. So the first uh, routing configuration we have is just route, which we saw in the first example, and, and this is just static routes. Um, so again, as we saw, they all kind of follow the same format. Um, we've got our HTTP verb here, which is git. Uh, then we have this list here. Um, and then we're just saying, hey, we have a static route. Uh, we want it to be slash, and we want you to return the text um, for hello world. And then we have this route, you know, slash my endpoint. I want you to return this stuff. Now, as I always say, I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to actually test it and make sure it works the way I say it does. Um, so here I have uh, the GitHub repo example up and running. Um, and I just hit the, the slash and we can see it's hello world. And then if I do slash my endpoint, uh, we can see that it's returning my endpoint. I'm an endpoint as well. Okay, so route makes up, you know, probably the majority of, of routes that, that you'll have. Um, but a lot of times we want to add some organization to our routes. So maybe we do organization by API. Uh, maybe there's some uh, view routes that we want to, to be different. Maybe we are organizing things by a domain. So maybe by posts or comments or things like that. Uh, for just using routes, we're going to be duplicating a lot of code and string. Um, and often that leads to uh, accidental errors. Um, so subroute actually gives us the ability to basically create folders of routes um, by being able to prefix routes and then anything within it kind of gets that prefix. So an example here um, is I've got one subroute uh, for uh, slash subroute slash, and then anything in here is gonna be prefixed with that uh, string. And so this one will be slap, slash subroute slash one. Um, and then we can also nest these subroutes. So uh, we can just do subroute, uh, sub, sub subroute, and then slash one. And then one thing I wanna show you is that um, if we were to just go to slash subroute slash, uh, we'll actually get a not found because um, we actually don't have any endpoint here registered. Um, we have a subroute, but there's actually no endpoint here. So uh, probably implicitly uh, said, but I wanted to say it uh, explicitly. So now let's test this out. So slash subroute slash one, um, we're hitting that endpoint. We do the sub sub route here and we can see that we're hit it as well. And if we go to sub route, uh, we normally would get a not found, um, but because I have the route F in place, we're actually hitting that route F. So this is a great sub segue into uh, route F. All right, so now we move over into parameterized routes. So the static routes, you know, if you hit the direct static route, um, then you will always hit that one endpoint. Um, but sometimes we want a little bit more power where we can say, uh, well, we want 
people to be able to hit this endpoint, but then give us different parameters via the routes, um, and maybe we'll return something different. So I do want to be clear that when I'm talking about parameterized routes, I'm not talking about URL params. So what I am talking about is like slash post slash uh, post ID, where the uh, variable, the parameter, if you will, is part of the URL itself. But I'm not going to be covering things like URL parameters where you're sending some sort of payload over. Uh, that is outside the scope of this video. Um, I might talk about that probably in a, in a future video, um, but just wanted to let you know that we aren't covering those right now. So the way that we can do that, this in giraffe, um, is with the route f function. And this is basically going to allow us to use string formatting um, to declare patterns for our URL. So in this first function, uh, we can see that here we just have our endpoint list. We're using git. Um, we have a route f. And we're giving it this slash with this like funny percent thing. Um, this is basically an identifier or a tag uh, for the type that I expect um, to come in here. And so basically it's saying if I have a slash and then I have a string, um, then I want to hit this function. Note that if there's another route that could get hit um, and it's not parameterized, typically those seem to take priority. Um, but if it were to go to a not found, um, but this, it'll probably hit this catch-all. And so theoretically, if I were to pass in like slash s, uh, we would get you know our string text back here um, with the value that I sent. Um, and we can string these together. And so basically here, the pattern is if you send a string with a slash and an int, then we will um, return, we'll hit this kind of route here, and this is where we'll you know return the text. Um, and what we would expect is if we were to send uh, a string um, with a slash, but something that's not an int, then we actually expect to hit a not found because uh, we don't have a route that says that we can take two strings uh, back to back. So let's test it out. So here we have slash s, um, which we're hitting that uh, slash a string. Here we type in slash s slash one, and we're hitting um, that URL with a string uh, and then an int. And then now let's try it with two strings. And here we get a not found because we just don't have any route um, that allows us to have a pattern of uh, SS or string string. Okay, and uh, giraffe handles most of the primitive types um, with these route F type tags. Uh, we used string in it previously, um, but there's all these other ones uh, here as well. For an up-to-date list, um, I just pulled this from the giraffe documentation linked below, um, and that should be the place for you know source of truth of this. And that's it. Uh, Giraffe makes it super simple to do these endpoints, and that's literally the, the whole API that should take you uh, through 95% of use cases. Um, for all the source code that I showed here, including all the examples that is available on uh, my blog post here and linked below, and then I also have my GitHub project, which contains um, the entire example I was running uh, alongside this and kind of showing you uh, the behavior. Uh, it has a link to that GitHub repo as well. So if you are building uh, F Sharp web APIs and struggling to get started or just want some examples of what APIs running in production kind of look like, um, you can check out this video, which goes over CloudSeed, uh, the F Sharp Svelte Kit boilerplate that I use uh, to start basically all my projects. That's about it for this video. So let me know if you got any questions uh, about F Sharp or Giraffe or anything like that, and I'll be happy to answer them. And uh, as always, this is where you can find me. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.